Hi, and welcome to another video series brought to you by PLCGurus.net. So this is going to be the first video in our Studio 5000 Essentials video series. This is the newest series that we're launching here on PLC Gurus. And it's going to take you right from basically having no knowledge of the Studio 5000 uh, Control Logics platform of controllers, uh, right up into some advanced concepts that we're going to discuss. So we're really excited to get going, and we look forward to uh, working with you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and configure our Studio 5000 Logics Emulate backplane here. So we're going to need to add our emulated processor to this virtual chassis. Uh, you can see here we have actually 17 slots to utilize. I mean, we're not going to use anywhere near this many. So I'm going to go ahead and click this little upward arrow here to collapse that lower half here, just because we don't need to look at them if we're not going to use them. So you can see the first two slots are currently taken up by RS Lynx Enterprise and RS Lynx uh, Classic, which is going to provide the communications necessary to our emulated processor. So we, we want to leave those where, where they're at. Well, that's not necessarily true. We can actually move these to different slot locations, uh, but for what we're going to do, I think we'll just leave them here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the first empty slot, which is slot two, to create our emulated processor. So I'm going to select the Emulate 5570 controller. And you're going to select the version of the software or the firmware that you want running in this controller. And this should match the version of the Studio 5000 software that you're running. So I happen to be running version 30, so I can leave it right at the default. But if you're running an older version, no problem. You can select that right here in the list. And I'm going to leave all the defaults. Really, I'm just going to click next through all of these screens just to accept all of the defaults. And again, default and finish. So it's going to take a second, and there we go. We can see we have our emulated processor now running in slot number two. Okay, so I think the next thing we should do is probably add a couple of I.O. modules to our configuration here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on slot three now and click create. And this time I'm going to go ahead and select the 1789 uh, simulation module. It's a 32 point input output simulator. So it can simulate either an input module or an output module or a combination of both really. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just configure two. We'll make one of them act as an input module. We'll make the second one act as an output module. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I do want it in slot three, so I'm going to click Next. And yeah, let's give it a label for the marquee. So this is just a label that's going to scroll across the module. So we're going to call this one Inputs. And I'm going to click Finish. So you can see now it's scrolling across there, Inputs. OK, perfect. So let's repeat that process and create the output module. Click OK, slot 4, yes, and we'll call this one Outputs. And click Finish. OK, so now we've got our RS Lynx uh, configuration modules here. We have our emulated processor, and we have an input module, a 32-point input module, and a 32-point output module. I think we're in pretty good shape here we can now get into creating an actual project and adding these IO modules to the IO configuration tree. So let's head on over to Studio 5000 and launch that. So we're going to create a new project and we want this project to be a Logix project and we're going to go ahead and scroll down till we see the Studio 5000 Logix emulate controller. So we're going to go ahead and click this little arrow and we're going to go ahead and select the Emulate 5570 uh, controller. And let's give it a name. We'll call this um, Emulated Project, being really original here. And we're going to click Next. And again, we're using re version 30. That's fine. We're going to go ahead. We'll put it to a seven slot chassis. Um, why not? And we're going to use no protection. And that's just about it. And, oh. We do have to remember we're not in slot zero. The emulated processor is in slot two. So we want to make sure we do go ahead and change that and we'll click finish. Okay, so let's go ahead and just resize this a little bit just so we can see the uh, emulator as well. So I'm going to bring this over here and maybe we'll just drag this corner down like so. And then we can see our soft logics emulated uh, chassis here. 
and our software. Perfect. Okay, so you can see here the emulate 5570 um, processor in slot two. And let's maybe we'll just do a quick once over of the software itself. Just so you're familiar with the different major components we're gonna be looking at here. So you can see here we have what's called the controller faceplate. And this is where we can do different mode selections. We can upload, download. You can see we don't have anything highlighted at this point, uh, but these will be available to us uh, once we get online with the controller. And then moving on to the main controller organizer window here. So I would refer to this as the cow, the controller organizer window. And you can see here we have the task directory. This is where all our tasks are gonna go. And I, and I understand if you're new to this, this isn't making a lot of sense at this point, but just, just stay with me. Um, and you can see it's broken down very logically into different motion groups. If we have some servo or motion type um, control going on in our application. When we get into add-on instructions, this is where our uh, AOIs will show up. Data types, this is where all the predefined and user-defined and odd add-on defined uh, data types that are, are, are available or you can create in the in your project. And the part we're interested in right now is the IO configuration. So we need to go ahead and add our two input and output modules here. And just moving along here, you can see we have a logic organizer or a logical organizer and our controller organizer windows. We can toggle those two tabs here. And moving up to the top, a very important piece is our instruction toolbar. Again, everything is grayed out at this point, but that's because we haven't actually opened a routine yet or created a routine yet. And this is the main programming area window. So this is where our logics designer, and this is where we're gonna add all our ladder logic as we move forward in this, in this video series, okay? So I hope that makes sense. So let's go ahead and add our two input and output modules. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the backplane. I'm gonna select new module. And here you'll see a list of every Allen Bradley module that is built as well, all of their third party vendor type modules um, that you have options to configure in your chassis. So there's just a, a plethora of different modules and module types. Um, but to quickly navigate to the ones we're interested in, the simulated ones, I'm gonna go ahead and deselect all of them and then scroll down to the other category. And you can see this is the one we're after. So it filters it very, very quickly for us. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, select that and click create. And so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. So I'm gonna call this simulated uh, inputs. And in the input type, you're gonna to wanna to select one here on the assembly instance. You're gonna put a size of two. On the output, you're gonna put a assembly instance two with a size of one. And on the configuration side, you're gonna put an assembly instance of 16. And you can go ahead and leave the size zero. And again, we wanna ensure that we're not in slot zero because our input module is actually in slot three. So we'll go ahead and click this little up arrow and we'll click okay. It's gonna go ahead and open up the module uh, connection property box here. And we do wanna modify this. So Rockwell does uh, recommend that you do increase this request packet interval so you don't get connection timeouts when you're dealing with this virtual uh, backplane here. So we're gonna go ahead and increase that from, fifth, from five to 50 milliseconds and click OK or apply. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the output module now. So it's gonna be the same workflow. I'm gonna right click the backplane, new module. I'm gonna deselect that. I'm gonna go scroll down here to other. I'm gonna select the module, create. I'm gonna give it a name, simulated outputs. And again, it's gonna be the same um, configuration parameters here. So it's gonna be one and oops, two, and then assembly instance two, one, configuration 16 and zero. And again, we want to do wanna modify the slot position 
and we'll put that to slot number four. Okay. And again, we want to increase the RPI of this module as well to 50. We'll click apply and okay. And we've effectively configured the emulator and IO for our project. Perfect. So just so you can see what was happening in the background while we were adding these modules to the IO configuration tree, I'm going to go ahead and go up to controller tags here and double click on that. So you can see while we were adding these IO modules, what was happening behind the scenes was entries into our controller tag databases uh, or database was happening. So you can see here it created several, several words for each slot that we configured here. So you can see it has a configuration word on slot three, an input word and an output word. And on slot four, it has the same configuration word, an input word and an output word. So if I go ahead and drill into this, because we're, we're, go ahead, we're dedicating this slot three as an input module, we're interested in the local colon three colon I uh, data word here. And I'm gonna go ahead and expand that. You can see it actually has two 32-bit words that were configured. So with these simulated uh, input modules, we're, we're actually interested in the second or the first array element of this word. This is the actual IO that we're gonna be uh, working with here, okay? It's, it's a goofy kind of thing, um, but just trust me, this is the word we're gonna be referencing when we go ahead and add actual IO or our inputs to the Logix Designer, okay? And then likewise, for the slot four, we're interested in the output word because again, we dedicated slot four as an output module, okay? And if you expand that, you can see we actually have 32 available outputs to use here as well. Okay. So there is one more thing I would like to point out uh, with respect to the Logix Emulate here that we're gonna make use of in subsequent videos. Um, so you can see here, if you, if you right click on the input module and go properties, uh, there's several tabs here. And the one I'm interested in showing you is this IO data tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just bring this down. So you can see here, we will have the ability, which is kind of a nice feature, to go ahead and toggle inputs on and off, just as if these were limit switches or something in the field that were being activated. So this is gonna be a nice little feature for us to just very quickly uh, go and toggle things on and off, okay? And you can see the output status uh, as well. But again, we've dedicated slot four as our output word. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that down. And we will be able to see these outputs change in real time as our program logic does drive the output. So I did wanna point that out before we concluded this video um, because we are gonna be making use uh, of these uh, module property um, toggles, if you will. Okay, so I hope you found this video informative. Please uh, click the like button below and do subscribe to our channel at plcgurus.net and head on over to our site and forum at uh, https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net. So we look forward to seeing you in the next video and thank you for watching.